Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. We're going to work on the skidoo today and we're going to clean the exhaust valves. Now, for anybody that has an 800 E-Tech motor in their skidoo snowmobile, you are going to need this video. Um, I know they're different on the P-Tech engines, but the theory is the same thing. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a controversial subject. So, I've read up a lot on it. I've never done this before. I, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> okay? I've never read up on it, or never done it before, but I've read up on it, I've watched some videos, done my homework, and from what I'm understanding, some people are hesitant to do this because they claim that once you pull the exhaust valves out, everything has to be recalibrated and resynced, and I don't believe that that is the case. Um, just going off of my personal know-how and how I've worked on a lot of motors of many kind, um, I feel like we can get these apart, get them cleaned up, get them reinstalled, and have no problems. But, I might make a fool of myself, but I'm willing to give it a shot anyway. So, disclaimer here, if you take your exhaust valves apart and clean them, there may be a need to resync them. I don't think that's the case. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not a skidoo dealer or a skidoo mechanic. I am my own mechanic. So, that being said, we're going to take this apart. I'm going to show you guys how to clean them. Um, this is a new learning experience for me too, so take it with a grain of salt, but uh, you guys know how I roll. I do everything on my own, and uh, win or fail, I'm going to video it. Now, the hood is off my unit because your boy wrecked his sled the other day, and so I had to replace a whole bunch of stuff on the front end. So if you missed that video, go check it out above. I'll put a link. But what we're going to do here is we're going to have easy access due to the hood being removed and be able to clean these no problem. So that being said, this is a plastic cover. There's two 8 mil bolts that hold that on. After that, we're gonna we're gonna do this together and see what we got going on. So let's start on it right now. Okay, let's start with these 8 mil bolts. Now the tool I'm using here is my Milwaukee 3 8 ratchet. Probably one of my most favorite tools that I have in the garage. And uh, like always, I'll leave a link below where you can get it. Okay, next we will remove these two 15 mil bolts, one on each exhaust valve. I want to call these diaphragms. Um, now, whether or not that's the correct term, I'm not sure, um, but we're going to go ahead and loosen these up. Uh, this one is kind of sticking here. I'm kind of curious if I'm going to have to use my wrench here. Yep, just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and use double up on this and use a wrench. That way it just doesn't try to spin on me. Like I said, I've never done this before, so I don't want to mess anything up. All right, next we're gonna remove these two eight mils right here. And that should allow us to remove this plastic um, cover, not cover, but a uh, uh, bracket here. Okay, and then we'll just tuck this thing out of the way here. All right, next we're gonna remove these two lines. Each side has um, two sets of lines. Um, one of them here has a check valve on it, and I'm assuming this is, from what I understand, is an oil feed. So um, we are going to pop this loose at the check valve. So uh, give it a twist there, and then go ahead and separate it. Um, but I'm gonna first work on this uh, vacuum line, get it popped off. Should come off fairly easily, without a problem. Just like so. And then right here, like I said, give this hose just a little bit of a twist and then separate it from your check valve. Just like that. Alrighty, boys and girls, now we're to the point where we gotta remove that bolt and that bolt right there. So it's a T30 Torx, that's the easiest way to get access to it. Um, you can't get a normal socket on it because of the diaphragm here. Um, but you can see kind of how this actuates using vacuum pressure, pulls in and out. So anyway, we're gonna remove those on each side and then we will see what the exhaust valve looks like.
right guys, we got our exhaust valves out, gaskets came off easy, everything looks good in there. I actually just rolled the motor over and inspected the pistons, and the, the pistons look amazing. There's not a single line on either of the pistons. Um, the, the, the piston, the top of the piston, the crown shows no signs of detonation or anything like that. This motor is running 100% perfectly. I mean, there's no carbon buildup hardly on those pistons at all. So I wish I could show you. Um, I probably could. Um, but getting the camera to focus in that teeny tiny hole with some lights a little bit challenging. I did try a little bit earlier. But uh, anyway, just take my word for it. This motor is running crisp. So that being said, here we've got both of our exhaust valves sitting on the bench. Now I went ahead and labeled this. I told you guys I was gonna take them apart exactly um, exactly the same, put them back in exactly the same. There's gonna be no changes done to it. So what I did was I ended up actually labeling where I'm not gonna clean, which is this hose fitting right here. And I put an R on that one for right side, an L on this one for left side. Everything else is gonna get clean, but I'm gonna do one at a time. That way there's no chance of mixing parts or anything like that. Um, not that I think it really matters, but, you know, like I said, if we're going to take something apart and put it back together exactly the way it came, we need to make sure. Now, I did notice this is a number three, this is a number five. So, I, again, that's why I'm going to do it exactly, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do them both together and have all these, you know, similar parts laying out. So we're going to do one at a time. Let me show you how to take this apart. Okay, these are pretty simple to disassemble, so I'm going to show you the... The easy way here, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this apart with my hoses being up and I'm going to go ahead and pull this side off, set it over here, pull the other side off, set it over there, and then this is a two-piece plate from what I understand um, that comes apart right here. But in order to take it off, you got to get rid of these springs, so um, springs. These are obviously going to be the same, they're going to be symmetrical. Just pop them off like so, nothing to it, and that is out. And then it's automatically going to want to, you know, retract because there's no more spring pressure on it and that diaphragm is doing its thing. Take my bolts out here. And then this is a two-piece valve here, so this should separate, I think, yes, it should separate, um, unless it's all gummed up and everything. but. Uh, can't be too hard. Oh, I see. I see how it works. Okay, so this slides that direction and then allows you to pull it off. That is handy. There we go. Okay, now we got that valve. And now we just have our remaining um, piece here that is connected to the diaphragm. Okay, so I watched a guy on YouTube. I, I'm, I apologize for not knowing his channel. and He shows that you push this out and you can spin this and disassemble it. So I wanna do that, but um, I'm gonna, okay. What I wanted to make sure was, is that by rotating this and taking it off, that it wasn't, it wasn't clocked at a certain position. And what I mean by that is, I've taken apart some things before where if they thread in and out, that you can thread things in to a certain point, like say, 12 rotations and that's where it should be. If you go 13 or 14, that's too far. But the way I'm understanding this is you can't thread it in too much um, and it should just straight up come out and then go back in no problem. So um, I'm not gonna go ahead and count it because I couldn't get it to go any tighter. So we're just gonna go ahead and take it off. Okay, like so. That comes out, we'll lay that right there. There's our gasket. And luckily I think I can reuse this gasket. I know that's kind of cheap of me, but if I can't, I mean, it's a five minute deal to take it apart. And then here is our actual diaphragm um, connection right there. And honestly, I don't think I'm gonna do anything with it. I think I'm just gonna kind of clean up this residue on top and leave it alone. I don't, I don't really wanna take it off of there and, and risk you know, um, losing my seal and having leak leaking issues that way, so I'm just going to leave that on there. We'll just kind of clean up this housing, this body a little bit, and call it good. Okay, I've got my little drain pan here. We're going to put our parts in there. Just going to use some contact cleaner, nothing too aggressive, and clean it up, use a brush, get all the carbon buildup off the parts, and then we will go back together with it.
Alrighty, we got all the parts cleaned up. They look amazing. I did get all the carbon buildup off the edges of the lips here, as you can see. Um, and then also polish the carbon off of that using my Prime MX wheels. So, uh, we are ready to go back together with it. I did also just kind of wipe around this. Just uh, use a little bit of cleaner on a rag and just cleaned up all that uh, dust and everything like that that comes off of the uh, off of the engine and the belt and the clutch and everything like that. So, let's go ahead and put this thing back together. We're going to do it in the reverse order that we did it. Um, we want to remember to take our gaskets, whether new or usable, I'm going to clean a little bit of oil off of this, and put them back on before we start putting the actual valve back together. Um, because you'll be hating life if you don't have a gasket on there. <laughs> so, let's position this gasket correctly. Um, this gasket is going to line up only one direction, and you'll be able to see how it goes based on where the holes are. It cannot be put on wrong. So, go ahead and put your gasket on first. And then the next thing you're going to do is take your valve, place it inside your diaphragm, and get it to where it starts threading onto the end of the diaphragm. And um, what I'm noticing here when I do this is that if I push out on this diaphragm, it's going to make it much, much easier to screw this in without disrupting my gasket. So go ahead, screw this in until it stops, which is going to be right there. Do not go any further than that as you don't want to rotate your diaphragm and, you know, kind of mess up that seal there. Okay, now at that point, go ahead, push on your diaphragm again. I keep dropping the gasket off, but um, push down on your diaphragm again. And then we're going to take our slide from um, the opposite end here, slide it up in there, and then let it retract. And now the slide is connected. Um, at this point... We can go ahead and put our springs on. Go ahead, push this out, and attach our springs. Now the springs is what holds this slide together so that it doesn't move and, you know, kind of uh, kind of cause us any issues that way. So um, I'm going to attach it from this side first and then come over to my slide like so. Pretty easy. Now one spring is not going to hold it out for us, so we've got to continue to hold this out. Attach our spring there, and then again on the slide. Okay, now between the two springs it is holding it out, so you can see how this is going to move. Alright, now that that's done, we can go ahead and move on with our end cap pieces. Now, these, remember the way that we had this, we had this hose side up, and these were on top like so, okay? Um, now, I was told in a video I watched that they were magnetic. I do not see how they are magnetic. I don't see them um, holding on magnetically anyway. So, I don't know what that's all about, but anyway, maybe it's a different model, something like that. So, that is assembled. Before I go ahead and put it back in the sled, I'm going to take my um, XPS oil, and I'm going to go ahead and coat all these parts, because they're dry, they're clean, I don't want to risk... Um, the chance of ruining any more of this coating that's already been wore off naturally from um, the sled running. So I'm going to get a little XPS and I'm going to put a little bit of oil on all this. guys and there they are we got our cleaned up exhaust valves ready to go back in the motor uh, they look really good even after being cleaned up just minimal wear here and there um, I didn't go ahead and clean up most of that carbon there it was pretty thick uh, we got we got a lot of it off but uh, yeah they look great uh, clean the housings up a little bit but what I wanted to talk about real quick is I run the skidoo synthetic XPS oil this is built for the direction direct injection um, engines and I know guys switch to Redline, they switch to uh, AMS oil, they switch to all these other oils for their sleds and you know all their two-stroke stuff but I have a really hard time getting away from what Skidoo says um, you should run because they have done extensive research, they have run these motors for years on this same oil and then made changes to it so uh, you know if you have a Skidoo 
the reason that my valves are this clean is because this is the only thing that's been run through it. I can for sure say that 100% um, positive. If you have a skidoo and your exhaust valves do not look this clean because you've ran another oil, um, just to understand that that's probably why. Uh, 91 ethanol free with the Skidoo XPS synthetic oil. All right, now, as you can see, I went ahead and I cleaned up my gasket surfaces. I do not have new gaskets, but I thought something that was interesting here is this has three stamps on it right there. I don't know if you guys can see. And then this one over here on the other side has a number three stamped on it. So I'm kind of curious as to what the deal is there and why they're different. As far as I understand, this motor's never been tore into, and it looks like it's never been tore into. So um, kind of an interesting thing there. Um, so those are cleaned up, ready to go. We're going to go ahead and mount these back up. Okay, got my assembly here. I went and put blue Loctite on the bolts as it called for. And now we're going to see if we can get this installed without dropping anything. Hopefully it goes in nice and smoothly without any issues here. Just like so. Alright, valve number two. Get this baby in here. Okay, torque on these is 80 inch pounds. And then I think the thing said that torque on these was 49 inch pounds, but because this is a plastic piece and I have Loctite on there, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and snug these up just a little bit. Just snug them up to where I think is gonna be good. And I'm not gonna worry about it again because I don't know, I just, I don't love torque specs on things that have plastic housings like that. I just I struggle with it had too many bad experiences okay our next piece is obviously going to be our um, joint here that kind of uh, sinks everything together and then here you're also going to want to put just a little bit of 243 on these just a dab here because these will these will come off again when we service it obviously so um, we don't want to get it too stuck on there but we don't want it to fall off when we're riding down the riding on the mountain so I would definitely definitely make sure these start turning on by hand without any issues before I get a wrench on them because you don't want those to break off for sure oh I made a mistake son of a biscuit okay back off with this I was wondering why it wasn't like seating correctly and I figured it out and you guys can probably already see it oh, I put it on upside down it even says top on it and I was like I gotta remember that I say that it's directional and that it says top on it so and I totally forgot and last but not least we got our cover and that will wrap up the entire install of the exhaust valves. Pretty simple. Pretty simple process. I'm pretty happy with how clean they came out and uh, really just how easy it was. I wasn't, wasn't too intimidated by it, but it's like any project when you've never done it before and it's a, it's a you know, expensive crucial part of the motor you're kind of sometimes you're like eh, how smooth is this going to go and torque on these is one ogadoga 
Not really, just tight. Um, I do want to talk about one thing really quick as to why we should clean the exhaust valves. Other than just, you know, um, a, a maintenance item, why, why would that become a maintenance item and not something that we just do on a full motor rebuild? The reason is, is because that exhaust valve collects a ton of carbon buildup, as you guys saw in the video. And over time, that carbon buildup gets thicker and thicker and thicker, and eventually it's gonna to get to the point where it's gonna break off and fall off, and you risk the chance of getting it between the wall of the cylinder and the piston itself. And that is a cause of a galled cylinder and ultimately losing the top end, or, um, you know, worst case, um, seizing a rod, something like that. So um, you could definitely cause some major damage having carbon buildup fall into the motor. Um, now, is that the cause of every issue? Of course not. I mean, um, you know, motors fail, things happen, stuff like that, um, lean conditions, rich conditions, you name it. But it's something that you don't need to chance. It's a serviceable item. You might as well do the work now because um, it, it could, you cleaning the exhaust, the exhaust valves could be the difference between you running the motor another 500 to 1,000 miles or having that piece fall in to the uh, cylinder and getting between the piston and the cylinder itself. So um, just a little food for thought, give you guys something to think about there. Um, I've, I've rebuilt motors from, you know, 2000 horsepower to this small skidoo motor that's putting out like, you know, I wish it was doing, you know, one, 170, 180, but I think it's about 165. So um, anyway, um, kind of something to, kind of something to uh, um, store in your memory bank there. So uh, if you guys liked it, Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, helps me out a lot, and you guys get to, you know, be a part of this kind of craziness. So, thanks for watching, we'll see you guys in the next one.